Hi, this is Claire and I'm going to show you how to solder your recycled cutlery rings. So we've made two rings, an entire ring um, out of a spoon and a ring out of a handle of a spoon. They're both EPNS, which is electroplated nickel silver and they can be soldered. Uh, it will compromise the silver coating, but nickel silver polishes up beautifully anyway. So it'd be doubtful there'd be much nickel silver on this ring anyway. I mean, much silver on this ring anyway. It looks like it's probably all gone. So I'm just going to show you some of the things that I have with me. So I have a small brush just for the flux. Now I'm using some flux paste and I have a scribe with a nice little area to hold on to so I don't burn my hands. And I have a pair of cross lockers to move the really hot metal and has a protective handle. I have a fire lighter. Um, I have cut some easy flow um, flux, I mean easy flow solder. And I have my gas cylinder and my soldering torch. Okay, so I'm all set up and down here I have, just make sure you can really see that. I'm just going to put the blind up to give you a bit more light. Hopefully you can see everything really well. Make sure everything's maximum light for you. So you can see here there is a carbon block. It's been well used. It's I have a nice new one over there, but we'll just use this one because it's a pretty dirty job. And I do have a tile, a kiln tile here for, of fire clay, which is can withstand heat. And on top of, underneath that, I have quite thick AC sheeting. Right, so just to start off, I've turned my gas cylinder on and it's ready to go. I'll do the easiest one first, which is the small nickel silver ring and I've really made a very close joint. Now solder will not jump so it does need to touch and it's quite tricky to make things touch. I often find make them overlap and then push them back is a good method and also using a pair of pliers on either side to swivel them in. Okay so it does need to be sanded and I did give that a bit of a sand with emery paper. In the previous video. So now I'm just going to cover the area I'd like joined with some flux. Now this is not great stuff to get on your skin so I'm avoiding putting it on my skin. It does clean the area a bit. It's going to make the solder flow. I'm just liberally putting it on that joint, a little join, and putting it on the copper plate. But now just in preparation, I'm going to use, uh, this is the way I've always done it, like those probably a million ways to do it, but I've always put a bit of flux onto my scribe, which I just reserve for this purpose. And I've cut some rather large pieces of silver solder. This is easy flow solder, the easiest flow you can get. So I use the sheets, you can use many other things, but I've always used sheets, so that's what I use. Okay, so it's on at the cylinder, I always make sure it's turned off beforehand. Then I turn on the gas and light it off to the side, and I can see the flame. Right, everything's all set up really important to be set up before you start this job and just play the flame around the ring. You can see the flux is bubbling, it goes a really dirty colour, but when it's clear you, you are ready to apply the solder and I just apply it straight to that joint. The whole piece needs to be at the same temperature, I flip it over looking for the solder to flow along that joint on both sides. I did use a, a substantial amount of solder so and I think that has flown, that has now joined. 
being careful not to melt my piece. So I'm turning off the gas. Of course, it's red hot, so you don't go touching it. I used a fair bit of solder and it did flow into some of the details of my design, which wasn't ideal. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool gradually. So I'll use this other carbon block just to place that down and let it cool, just cool gradually. And when it's cool, I'm going to put that into some pickle. Here is my large ring. Now this is still very hot um, and I haven't been able to achieve quite the join that I would have liked with this ring, but I have got one contact point, which is just in here. It might be that it relaxes a bit and I might get another contact point, but even if it, I do get one contact point, I would be satisfied with that. So I'm going to put that on and this is going to be a much harder piece to solder because it's much larger and you have to get the whole piece to the same temperature with this kind of soldering, silver soldering with a gas torch, oxyacetylene, etc. You can do spot soldering, but I don't have that oxyacetylene equipment here. I uh, just use this simple soldering technique. Right, so I've covered that joint quite liberally, probably extremely liberally. <laughs> I might even put some underneath that spot in hope that the metal relaxes, but who knows. Okay, got large pieces of solder here because this is quite a big piece. I'm going to pick up, I've just picked the solder up like that. I always use a little bit of wet flux to hold the solder and I just put it to the side like so. Okay, so again, it's not a particularly difficult process, but um, you know, it is dangerous. You need to be very conscious of safety. And for my students uh, who have learnt to solder, I always get them to buddy up to remind them so they can remind each other of the safety. So turning on the gas flow, lighting it to the side. I can hear it's lit. Flame is not very easy to see. Okay, so I'm going to start warming up this piece. Now I'm going to need quite a lot of heat. One of the reasons why I like using carbon blocks is because they do not absorb the heat. So I'm going to give it a lot of flame. And this is only quite a small torch, so big pieces, not easy. Just playing the flame around. Metal's not a great colour anymore, it's not very shiny. But I can see where it's contacting and I can see the flux bubbling. I'm going to try to put the solder on. The solder's melted straight away and it was the right temperature. Turning it over, do I think it has joined is the question. Not easy to join these large pieces. Goodness knows where it's gone. I can't actually see it in there, so you put another piece on, another piece of solder. Joining it up the top. And you can definitely see it melting in the join. And I can see it on both sides, so I think it has joined. Okay, turning the flame off and setting the gas torch aside. So, these scribes seem to be quite good to use with soldering. Uh, I do like to keep them very clean. Good to get, that, get rid of the dirty flux and it's get good to clean your brush because once the solder, once the flux dries on it, it's not very pleasant to use. So, at this point now, I'm gonna let this one cool and my other ring has cooled and I'm going to drop that into my pickle, which is sulfuric acid. It's 5% sulfuric acid and I have it in the fume cabinet. So um, I'll see you in the fume cabinet. So 
I hope you enjoyed watching how to solder and that that's helpful for you when you're making your recycled cutlery rings. Bye for now.